Hi Crafty Cube, I hope all's well. My name is Kirsty, Crafting Kirsty here on YouTube and on Instagram. It is Sunday the 24th of October 2021 and this is Crafty Tube number one. I have no idea if there is such a thing as Crafty Tube, but it's what I am going to name the videos that I make in my little slice of the YouTube pie um, that include the projects that I do that don't neatly fit into my floss tube videos, i.e. cross stitching or my quilty tube videos. And yes, you've guessed it, my quilting videos. So I occasionally do different crafts, um, not altogether successfully <laughs> a lot of the time, but I give them a go anyway. And uh, I'll probably only make about one, two crafty tubes a year max. Um, but I thought I'd just show you what I've been up to and in particular the haul that I seem to have amassed over the last couple of weeks. So um, I hope you're all well and I hope you enjoy what I have to show. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is my crochet project. So if you've watched any of my floss tubes previously, you'll know that last year, I think in November, I started a quick and easy crochet shawl um, using a pattern from Tiffany Hansen on YouTube. And I'm sure it would be quick and easy if you knew what you were doing. For me, it has just been the shawl from hell. Um, I think I finished it or I decided I'd had enough and finished it either just before harvest or just after harvest. Um, and I've had so many sharp sagas with this shawl. Sorry, itch, you know, so many sharp sagas with this shawl along the way that it's just beyond a joke. Um, I think the first one was when I bought the sort of hank of yarn, went to wind it up and got a complete snap, nap, rat's nest out of it. It just disintegrated in my hands. Um, and then I couldn't, essentially you need a straight top. I couldn't get the pattern correct to get the straight top. And I must have ripped this out about, sorry, I've just wobbled the camera. I must have ripped this out about five, six times and started again and started again. And eventually worked the pattern out and using a safety pin, worked out which stitch I needed to put the safety pin in to then start the next row from, if that makes sense, which kept it straight. So once I got that going, I was really pleased. I then decided to introduce another colour. So I introduced this red colour and that was going well. And then I decided to introduce a third colour and I introduced a brown and the yarn was much thicker. And I put a post about it onto Instagram. And so I said, what does everyone think? And they all said, rip it out. It's so much thicker, you're going to really struggle again with the counting and keeping of the edge straight on the top. Just get rid of it, don't do it. So I took that one out <laughs> and then just carried on with the red and green. And uh, as I said, I just got to the end. I was, I had so many bits of yarn that I was tying knots in to make decent lengths to be able to crochet with it. And I then just thought, right, this is it. I've had enough, I've finished. And I thought, well, I need to wash and block it. And uh, I did look at a couple of videos. And I thought, okay, that's fine, I can do that. So of course I put it in the washing machine. And as I put it in and shut the door, I thought, knowing this shawl, this is gonna come out like two inches square. Um, it didn't quite, <laughs> not far off it, but it didn't quite. So it washed absolutely fine, apart from this red yarn, which has just, it's sort of gone and just stuck itself together really. It's just really thickened and tightened up. This was quite loose. I mean, I did crochet it, deliberately crocheted it quite loose. So it was a bit like the green. I don't know if you can see through Ooh, the green, but that is that same pattern on this, but it's just gone in the wash which obviously has shortened the shawl somewhat. I can still, it will go around, it's a bit solid. And it's, it's that bit shorter, I would need a, a sort of a brooch, I suppose, or something here just to keep these two bits. It doesn't just sit, it's a bit too short here. It doesn't quite sit across the shoulders properly. Um, I did block it and I couldn't get this out. I couldn't sort of relax this in any way. I have been thinking, I don't know whether to put it into warm water and not sort of swirl it around, wash it, but just put it into warm water to see if it'll relax and try and block it out a bit more like that, which might open this up again. And then I also think, can I really be bothered? I really have just had enough of this shawl now. So at the moment this sits, so let me show you a little bit of it. It sits on the back of a chair, the back of the rocking chair in the lounge. 
basically every time I look at it, it just sticks two fingers up at me going, God, you're not very good at this, are you? Um, and I sort of look at it and think, oh, okay, well, that's that done. Um, they are talking about, you know, fuel shortages and all shortages. So desperate times, desperate measures. I might be using it this winter. Just, yeah, it's not quite big enough. It's a bit thick around the, or solid around the back of the neck, but equally actually in the evenings, something like this, it's absolutely fine. It's done and dusted. The shawl is done with. Um, I've learned a lot of lessons <laughs> from, this, from this shawl. Whether I actually take any note of them is a different thing, but I have learned a lot of lessons from it. So obviously having finished that shawl and being very, well, I wouldn't say disappointed with it, but obviously it's not what I'd hoped it would be. I bought another massive project. <laughs> But this one, I am getting on well with. So I saw on Instagram a post from Attic24. And I'm showing you that because when I first heard it, it was somebody talking about it and I thought they said Attic24. So that's what I put into my Google search. And funnily enough, none of them were crochet. Well, not on the websites I saw anyway. So it is Attic, as in the space at the top of your house. 24 and it's called sorry it's called the yuletide blanket now i bought this as a kit from the wool warehouse um it is said to be you know she does say it's easy very beginner friendly she has some very good blogs about it um lots of pictures demonstrations you know talking you through it it came in a gorgeous everyone always talks about the lovely organza bags and they are they're very nice all of this came and I think it's Bernie from Hooking and Stitching was talking about the fact she couldn't find any claret at the moment. You can't find it because there's two of them in every one of these bags. <laughs> That's where it all is. It's in our Yuletide blankets. Um, and what I've actually done is I have followed the directions properly. I was told to make a little card and take little snippets and write the names of the things on so you remember. But what I'm actually doing with them, which is working just as well, is once I've started using it, I'm cutting up my daughter's tights and just keeping it all together in the tight. And I've also got the label in here as well, so I know the colour. So I've got two ways of identifying the colour, so hopefully I don't go wrong. Um, and so far to date, this is what I've got to, and I'm really, really pleased. Absolutely loving the colours. Excuse the back with all the threads that I need to sew in. Yeah, so this is what I've got to so far. Again, I'm sure it's me and the way I read a pattern, but I was reading that and the pattern's really clear, really un easy to understand. I did exactly what it said on the pattern and I wasn't quite getting it. I wasn't quite there, but fortunately the pattern does come with, I can see if, oh, here we go. That doesn't tell you much. Some really good pictures in it. So I did go back to just looking at the picture game. Right, I need two stitches and then a long one, two stitch. And then I've, I've worked it out from there and I've carried on. And I'm really pleased with that. As I said, I absolutely love it. Finding it relatively easy to work. At the moment, I can still sort of sit down with a cup of tea and do a colour. I know soon I'll get to the point where one line will be a cup of tea's length. Um, but, or one side will be a cup of tea's length. But yeah, so I'm really, really enjoying it. Lots of lovely colours. I don't think I've used them all quite yet. Well, oh, maybe I have. Maybe I have. But anyway, it's just a sort of three pattern retreat, repeat. Loving it. So the next thing I decided to do was I've been for a long time, I've been talking about wanting to learn how to knit. I watch people like um, Charlo Cross Stitch MD and Zoe of Coco Cross, Coco Creates. Zoe of Coco Creates. And she does a lot of also a lot of lovely knitting. It's really, really nice. Um, and I keep on saying, oh, I want to learn how to knit. And I thought, all right, it's time to stop talking the talk and start walking the walk. So I went on to Caroline at Off The Grids Needle Arts. And she has, if you go into her channel and then go down to her playlists and scroll along, and she has about 26 videos. Um, I think she was teaching Gerald, the ginger stitcher, to knit. And she did it as a sort of a YouTube video tutorial. And they're absolutely fantastic. So I've started to look at those. 
Um, and I have knitted before in the past. I've got a teddy bear, my old teddy bear that has a scarf on that I'm sure I knit. I knitted, sorry. Um, but I think my mum must have cast on and cast off. And then pre-COVID, I was going to a quilt sort of group um, where everybody did a lot of different stuff, some very talented ladies there. And one of them was knitting and I said, would you show me just how to cast on and off again and things? And she did. And I took it home and started knitting and then I couldn't keep it straight. I was adding stitches. I was, and I didn't know how, I didn't know how I was doing any of this, but it was, it was not a straight edge at all. So I sort of gave up at that point. But following Caroline's tutorial, once I'd watched the first two or three, I realised what I'd done that had meant that I was increasing and decreasing by accident. Um, and so I thought, right, I'm going to give it a go. So she starts with the long tail cast on. That's it, the long tail cast on. And I sort of put out an Instagram post saying, I'm, you know, I'm going to give this a go. I'm learning how to do this. And I had a couple of people saying, well, good luck with that. We've really struggled with that one. If you struggle, there are other options. Let us know. We'll tell you how we do it. And I sort of thought to myself afterwards, I thought, well, I must be doing this wrong because I actually seem to be able to do this. <laughs> so... This little scrap is actually upside down. So this little scrap shows I've done the cast on. I then did a few nose of, rows of knit, a few rows of purl. By this point, I'd moved on to the next video and I learned to increase and decrease and then just did a bit more knitting and purling. Um, I didn't bother casting this one off because I just couldn't be bothered really. Um, so I moved on from that and as Caroline shows us, I have made my first dishcloth. This isn't proper dishcloth material. I had some sort of leftover yarn that I had been knitting with before or trying to knit with before. So I just used that and the needles that I had. So there's my first dishcloth. And from that, I have moved on to a pattern on Ravelry I found. I put in the filter free, beginner, shawl, um, and it came up, quite a lot of them came up with circular needles, which obviously I haven't used, learned to use yet. So I steered away from those and I found, unfortunately it's on my phone, so I can't show you what it is, but I found a very simple pattern. It's just a triangular scarf um, and you basically knit up increasing and then you decrease doing knit pearl, knit pearl, knit pearl. And I thought, right, I can do all of those. I know how to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. Again, I was just using the needles that I've got and the yarn that I've got. And this is the yarn that I used. I think this is, it's called Serdar. It's readily available in Hobbycraft. I think this is dual tone possibly I don't know I used it to make a granny crochet granny square blanket with it it's got lots of lovely colors in it and this is my start so far so I'm just going to straighten out a bit on my needles now I've got a safety pin in here because the way you basically change you're increasing every other row and uh, so I started and I thought well if I put this down I'm going to struggle to work out what row I need to be on next whether I'm increasing or not so I kept put the safety pin in so I could just count and work out where I was and then now of course it's obvious so that's fine so that's going really quite well so far that's sort of I think a day's work or possibly a day and a half here and there well, I'm really enjoying that um <laughs> I will see I will get expert advice when I need to uh, block it and wash it and block it and do all that sort of stuff so that's my knitting. So I'm really pleased. I've eventually started to learn how to knit. Um, so those are the main sort of yarn type crafty things. Um, obviously, with it being autumn, there's pumpkins everywhere. And so I decided to make, I followed a YouTube tu tutorial, Christopher Heidman, um, H-I-E-D-E. -E -E. Man, I think, let me just double check, sorry. Because he has a lot of, he just happened to flash up, I don't know why. Um, but he has a channel that is Holiday and Home Decorating. Let me see if I can show you that without the glare, sorry. So that's Christopher Hydeman. Um, And he just had a really, really simple fabric, I think he made his with velvet, pumpkin tutorial. And so I followed it, but I've used, this is brushed cotton that I'd bought a while ago. Um, so, so simple. And a twig 
for the twig. I have this one in this shape. They're not the best of shapes. I was using really cheap cotton thread at the top to gather it in with. And funnily enough, it kept on snapping, which is what it happens when you use cheap stuff. Um, so they're not the most perfect of shapes, but cheap. And then my little, little, little ditty baby one. This is mm, so tiny, I can't even show it properly. Now, interestingly enough, this is what you get with a dinner plate. So it's still not big using a dinner plate. This is what you get with a side plate. And this, I think I must have used either a soup bowl or maybe this was a pasta bowl possibly and this was a side plate. But I remember being really quite surprised when I cut them out, stuffed them and pulled them together. I expected them to be quite a lot bigger to be quite honest with you. I mean, I love them. They're really cute and diddy and they're so simple and I will be making more next year at some point. But I was quite surprised at how small they reduced down to once you gathered them in. So those are my little pumpkins. So that's what I've made this year. Now, last year I saw on Olivia of Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, she showed that she had made a grungy jack and this owl doesn't have, not the owl, the ghost. So she had made a couple of these with rusty bells on and she made some of these. And I also bought, but haven't made yet, the crows. So this is all from Prims by Denise at yahoo.com or Peach Bottom Primitives on Etsy. Um, and so it was actually my daughters that made these last year. So we have one goosey. He should have a little rusty bell, but I've never bought one of those. I might do at some point. So just very simple. You sort of make up this mixture, paint the fabric with it, bake it in the oven, and then put it together and add the extras. And then we have the big pumpkin. He's so cool, I love him. Absolutely fantastic. You know, it's not fantastic, but that's the whole point of it. It is just a little primitive decoration. He's survived a year and has come back out again. So obviously he's not badly constructed. And I would like to make a few more of these. I need to make the crow. I think I cut the crow out and I can't remember. We either ran out of stuffing or I ran out of patience. <laughs> One or the other. Quite probably patience, to be honest with you. Um, and so I never got around to making the crow, but I will need to make him. And along those lines, that same, I don't really know what you would call that as a craft. I mean, they're described as ornies, so ornies making some ornies i then picked up this which is a snow couple and this came from liberty creek primitives now i think cynthia of stitching with the light stitching by the light stitching with the light i think it is on youtube she does lots of fantastic homemade decorations and things and she was discussing this i think at the beginning of this year in january she sort of said oh you know let's have a little bit of a so along making these so i downloaded it but never got around to making them but whilst i was there obviously <laughs> having downloaded the snow couple i also downloaded baxter so these are all from liberty creek primitives on etsy hazel bit of a bandy legged lady there and joe the scarecrow yeah, so I have those to make. Um, I will make obviously the snow couple first and then eventually get around to making these at the correct timers of the year, I suppose. I do enjoy, I absolutely love making these sort of things, but I'm I because it's all new to me, I don't have stuff just hanging about. So I would actually have to take this, take the entire list to Hobbycraft and purchase it all. And it's slightly, not off-putting, but it's one of those sort of things where you think, mm, spending yet more money. I mean, obviously, if I can make anything that's orange or black or ghost coloured, then I'm good to go. But yeah, so I need to start sort of gradually increasing my 
general stash of things like this because i'm sure a lot of things will overlap within the same patterns a lot of the colors and a lot of the materials and things it's just a case of going out and getting the initial bump to get going with um and then next to show you i think i think i'll go with this book now i showed this book in my cruelty tube video and it's autumn bounty rene Nanimum, nanimum, nanimum. But it's an absolutely fantastic autumnal book. Lots and lots of patterns in it. And I showed it in my quilty tube video because there's some nice quilts in it that I'd like to make. But also there are other stuff. So you have this penny pumpkin cushion, which is just lovely. We have, so I have label things. Or not label things, mark things. Round and round table. No. Round and round table mat. So pretty. And again, once you've sort of started making things like this, you will. I will then have leftover scraps of material that will then go towards other projects, which is absolutely great. But it's just the starting of it again. And then this one, which is so cool. Now this is actually called Pin Pals. Top candlesticks with a perfect pair of fun and functional pin cushions. So I'll show you this one first. We'll see we've got the pumpkin and then the owl. And actually the full picture of the owl. And this is designed by Jan Goose. Goose, Goose. I'm going to say G-O-O-S. Isn't he cool? And really, you know doesn't look too technical or too difficult and then I did another one um, which I had kept with a crochet hook that's now fallen out so here we go this is fall frolic fashion a purse brimming with folk art flair for everyday use well that's quite cool isn't it it's quite sweet yeah so that's a fab book with lots of projects in it for future dates as usual one of these days when I have the time. Um, I bought a whole load of quilting stuff from So Hot and I also picked up, sorry, I should have taken this out of the packet and I haven't made any of these yet this year, but I picked up Bare Roots, what does it say? 236, number 236, Eek and Spooks. So they're just lots of Pumpkins, obviously, with the different templates on. I've picked up more for the templates than for anything else, to be honest with you. Um, I think it calls for... Is this for with felt? Wool felt. But I suppose you could use felt itself or just any autumnal fabric, I suppose. And then, yes, you can just see you've got ghosts, faces, cauldrons, cats, skeletons. So they'll be good fun to make at some point. Although probably not now. We're starting to slowly get out of autumnal stuff. Because it'll be Christmas soon. Christmas. Um, right, I went to a quilt show in Malvern a couple of weekends ago. And found a few things to purchase. So the first thing I bought, and I have bought from her before, Brenda Walker. So it's Country Folk by Brenda Walker. And this is called the Double Knit Dating Agency. And it's a draft excluder. How cool are those sheep? I don't know if Stitchy Sally is watching this. But if she is, look at those sheep, Sally. They're calling to you. And I bought this as a kit because that is something that I am starting to try to go down the route of. So if it comes in kit form, I'm buying it in kit form. Because at least then I've got everything to make it and I'll be far more likely to make it. So this is the kit that came. Look, you've got fluffy wool in it. I'm not taking it all out, I'm afraid, because it's too neatly packaged. But yeah, so that's, I'm looking forward to making that. So that's Country Folk by Brenda Walker. And she has lots and lots and lots of very pretty stuff. Really cool. Um, the next thing I bought was Monkey Buttons, another handbag or another bag project. I seem to buy a lot of bag, pro bag projects, but I haven't really made many of them yet. And I've bought, well, I think actually this pattern does do all three, but the one I particularly like was this one with the houses on. 
And so this is monkey buttons. Now this lady has a lot of quilt patterns, so I keep on wobbling you. A lot of um, quilt patterns, of which I bought a couple, and bag patterns. She has a big, it's not here, she has a big, um, no, the word's gone completely. Just a list of everything that she has in her shop. No, it's gone. It's Sunday morning. I'm sorry, it's too early. It's gone. Anyway, she has an awful lot of stuff in her shop. <laughs> all under monkey buttons, but it's all quilts, bags, really, really pretty stuff. And so she didn't, unfortunately, she didn't have the sort of plaids that make up the houses here. Excuse the dog. So I bought this sort of, uh, what is it? Fat Eights bundle with these sorts of fabrics in that are all lovely and pretty. I'm sorry, you probably can't see those all very well. And then a purple fabric to go with it. Sorry, excuse the dog's barking. And then a calico fabric as well. So that is my handbag pattern. Or not handbag, bag. That I will make at some point. Um, and then the next thing I bought, Oh, I haven't taken him out, but hopefully there isn't too much glare. Ferdinand Fox. Obviously, though, it's Basil at the end of the day, isn't it? And this is by House of Zandra. Sorry, I've got my finger over it. That's not very helpful. House of Zandra. Now, I have made one of their things before, which I have shown before. My chicken. So these are really good fun to make. Um, and I did buy, a couple of years ago, I bought the Dandy Dragon. So I will get around to making him at some point. But yeah, this time I bought Ferdinand Fox. And this time, so, sorry, the chicken and the dragon came as kits. And there's lots in there. But you get lots of stuff in there. Excuse me, they've got a lot of smaller patterns this time. And you can either buy the pattern by itself, or they do do the accompanying rolls of wool. Well, felt and he did say there was enough in there if you cut it carefully there is enough to get two Ferdinands out of it and maybe I'll have a Ferdinand and a uh, Vicky Vixen I don't know we'll see but no my luck I won't cut it properly anyway um but yeah so I've bought him he's so cool so that's House of Zandra again they will be online and that's his little tail at the back or brush at the back there we go. And then finally, the one that I am, well, I'm excited about it all. Obviously, I'm excited about it all, but I am really quite excited about this one when I saw it. And this is, again, I bought it as a kit from Thimblewood, and it's Secret Santa. And I'll show you the outside of the box. And then in the box, you have the kit, surprisingly enough. So you've got your stuffing and your fabrics to make him and obviously you have my instructions here but the most exciting thing about this secret santa is on the back of it here his top comes off and you can fit a terry's chocolate orange in his bottom so who doesn't want to eat a terry's chocolate bottom out of santa's bottom mm -hmm. how cool is that i can't wait to make that so this is from, oh, she's on Etsy. So Thimble Wood, which I think is uh, Michelle Goodfield. Sewing pattern designed by Michelle Goodfield. Yeah, so there's lots of instructions and templates and it's just a chocolate orange, really. That's what sold it for. Um, so I think that is it for today's Crafty Tube. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for staying and watching, if you have stayed and watched and got this far. Um, as I said, there's going to be very few of these scattered in amongst the year, um, just as and when either I've made enough stuff to make it worthwhile gathering all together or bought enough stuff to make it worthwhile turning the video on. <laughs> anyway, take care. Have a good couple of weeks. I hope to be back in a couple of weeks' time with a floss tube. Um, and then another quilty tube probably at the back end of November. Take care. Bye.